Hey guys, I've got a killer problem for you today. What if we took the product of a bunch of different factorials? One factorial, two factorial, three factorial, all the way up to 100 factorial. We multiplied all of those together. Is there one of them that we could take away that would make that overall product a perfect square? All right, there are a lot of moving parts here, so let's start with what is a factorial. If we have something like 3 factorial, for example, that means 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial, of course, is 2 times 1. 1 factorial is just 1 itself. 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We just start at the number itself for any natural number, any counting number. We count all the way back down to 1, and then we multiply those all together. One thing we should be able to tell here is as we look across, these numbers are going to be represented many, many different times. One will end up being represented the most because one is a part of every single one of these factorials. So looking at this left to right, we could say, well, actually, another way to write this is we're going to have a one to the hundredth power because we would have a hundred ones all being multiplied together by the time we get to our last factorial. Similarly, if we do the same thing for two, we would have a two, but this time to the 99th power because one factorial itself, of course, did not have a 2. So we also need to multiply by 2 to the 99th. You can tell, oh, so this is also going to have 3 to the 98th and 4 to the 97th and so on, all the way down to 99 to the second times 100 to the first. This giant factorial product only has a single hundred in it coming from the hundred factorial itself. Although it might not look like it, I actually think this expression, which again is equivalent to our original expression, is a a little bit easier to deal with when it comes to thinking through perfect squares. Because perfect squares have a certain pattern when it comes to their exponents. This pattern is super easy to see if we look at the square of a prime number. 25 obviously is just 5 squared, 49 would be equal to 7 squared. But even for numbers that are not prime squares, we should be able to discern something about their exponents. Something like 81, for example, is 9 squared, but if we write it in terms of primes, we can see it's 3 to the fourth power. What we should notice here is no matter how we try to write down a square number, the exponents are always even. Any number that's made up entirely of even powers of some exponential base is guaranteed to be a perfect square. What that means for us when we think about which of these factorial numbers we can remove to produce a perfect square is we really don't want to mess with any of the even powers of numbers at all. So this 1 to 100, 3 to the 98th, 5 to the 96th, all the way up to 99 squared, we don't want to mess with those at all. We want all of those numbers represented in our overall factorial product. Those are all the numbers with odd bases, so in fact what we want to concentrate on now are all the numbers with even bases. 2 to the 99th, 4 to the 97th, 6 to the 95th, all the way up to 98 to the third, and of course 100 itself to the first. Now this giant product is also really close to being a perfect square, because it's really close to 2 to the 98th. It just had one extra 2. And it's really close to 4 to the 96th, it just had one extra 4. In other words, if we take just one of those even numbers from all these different powers, the result that we're going to have left at the end of that process will be one giant perfect square with a bunch of even powers, which we got rid of before and we can get rid of again, and then the product of all the even numbers going up to 100. And then that becomes interesting to us because the product of all of the even numbers up to 100 is a kind of factorial number. Now, it's not one of these these factorial numbers, so we're not quite to our answer, it's what's called a double factorial. This is specifically the double factorial of 100. That means starting at 100, counting down by 2s, 100, 98, 96, all the way down to 2, and multiplying. And there's an interesting connection between even double factorials and factorials themselves. Every single one of these even numbers obviously is even. It's a multiple of 2. I can tell that there are 50 of those numbers, because I'm looking at the first 100 in integers, but only the even ones. And so what that means is this number involves 50 different twos. But if I took those different twos out of all of these numbers, what I would have left is a one from the two, where we divide a two out of two, a two from the four, where we divide a two out of four, a three from the six, a four from the eight, all the way up to a 49 from the 98, and a 50 from the 100. And this number is a factorial. This is equal to 50 factorial. Finally, this 2 to the 50th obeys the same rule of perfect squares that we've already discussed. It has an even exponent, and so this is itself a perfect square. The only thing from this giant factorial product we started with that's not a perfect square is 
a 50 factorial. And so if we just divided out a 50 factorial from that original factorial product, we would have a perfect square. So there you have it, one factorial times two factorial, all the way up to 49 factorial, times 51 factorial, times 52 factorial, all the way up to 100 factorial. That product is a perfect square, and all we had to get rid of was that 50 factorial.